Hi there, I'm Das Smith from the Hellfire Club, and today we have a very interesting project to share with you. It's a mystery from the 1970s, and when I feel the viewers reported data to me that as project manager seems to indicate an object and a technology that is not a normal man-made object. I want to see what you think about this, so please leave your comments and thoughts down below. We would all be very interested in seeing what these are. So enjoy the videos, which is in, comes in several parts. The first one is a joint debrief session with the majority of the remote viewers who could attend. And then the ones that couldn't attend, they send in, sent in their individual remote viewing sessions. And we tagged these on the end of the video view. Namaste, enjoy the video, and we'll see you next time. So, remote viewing the bet sphere. Uh, this is a target I personally wanted to work myself for many years, but obviously, you know, you can't work your own targets. So, I got you guys the next best thing to do it for me. Uh, so, the remote viewing queue is itself 29017711. The object known as the bet sphere, which is in the USA or was in 1974 onwards. And I wanted you to sketch and describe the object known as the bet sphere and also describe the inside of the object, but also describe its origin and use. I gave you guys feedback as well, so you could see all these different uh, sources of information. There's loads more out there. There's tons of podcasts and all sorts. You know, this has been a thing of mystery for going on 30, 50 years now. People still don't know what, what happened to it. And, you know, there are, I don't know if you guys saw in the feedback, but there are these allegations that when the U.S. military um, took the sphere away to do the tests and stuff, what was returned to the family wasn't they didn't feel was the same sphere they think it was replaced with uh, with a fake five to to correct this does i think it was the navy who the got navy. who yeah. uh, take back the sphere but the sphere yeah. disappeared when it was uh, handed to Heineck. yeah so just a quick background here the bet sphere is a metal sphere with an approximate diameter of 8 inches or 20 centimeters weighing nearly 22 pounds or 110 kilograms. And it was uncovered in 1974 by a family in Fort George Island, Florida. After a fire destroyed their property in March 1974, the Betts family found the bizarre metal sphere in their yard and believed it was a historic cannonball from Florida's Renaissance era uh, from the Spanish colonizers. But the sphere was clean and free of corrosion and it was very shiny. When the family took the sphere home, they said it started to behave by itself and their accounts detailed the sphere rolling by itself and making noises and also vibrating. Uh, it followed people around the place and all kinds of stuff. In uh, an, a, an April 1974 interview with the St. Peterburg Times, Jerry Betts said that when the family dog got near to the sphere, she began to whimper and cover her ears with her paws, something I've never seen her do before. Um, I think this is quite relevant to quite a lot of your guys' data because a lot of your data in the sessions is talking about frequencies and waves and stuff. When an expert from the research firm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, examined the sphere, he found radio waves coming from it and a magnetic field around it. Then the US Navy analyzed the sphere at Jacksonville Naval Air Station. A Navy spokesman told the St. Petersburg Times that the Navy's first X-ray attempts failed because its machine wasn't strong enough to penetrate the steel, but two subsequent tests showed the contents of the globe. And I have pictures of that as well. Uh, here's the X-ray of it there. And it's very hard to see, but it does have three cores, a larger core getting smaller and then smaller here. So there's three cores. And there's also a very thin wire on the inside there, in one of the cores as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's three equally spaced spherules, uh, one which is seemingly burst or radiating in the middle, as well as varying densities of the interior of the Betts sphere. And additionally, there appears to be a hair-like wire lying filament leading off towards the five o'clock position from the larger one. So there's the larger one there, and it's just coming off here. After the military drew uh, mostly blanks with the sphere, a team of scientists took it upon themselves to solve the mystery. J. Allen Hynek, a Northwestern University astronomy professor, was part of a team of experts who examined it. Widely regarded as one of the most well-known ufologists of all time, Hynek and his powers were reportedly unimpressed with what they saw and agreed that it was a man-made object. 
Uh, my thoughts on this was uh, on reviewing the RV data, my main thoughts were to see if the viewers would report the known parts of this target, which were then essentially the form and shape from the descriptions and the images and the X-ray images from the inside here as well. Uh, I wanted to know if that if these match, then I would also consider the rest of your data and other data that would manifest because this is a known, you know, we can't really quantify that against feedback, but it would be very interesting. Uh, and of course, this would not have tangible feedback to it. So, yeah, I really wanted to just focus on the on the physical shapes in this. And this is what I looked at in your data more than anything. So all the data together from all the remote viewers on the physical shapes is pretty much here. Uh, as you can see, there's a huge amount of correspondence to the spherical nature of this target and even, you know, lots of stuff which kind of indicates stuff going on inside the sphere as well, you know, pretty much in all of them. Data bright breakdown here. Uh, here's some of Carl's top sketches here at the sphere. And there's Dimmy's ones here. And Dennis's ones at the bottom. Darby's ones are here to the side. Hmm. And these wow. ones here on the right. And then Naeem and Don didn't have so much good, what I call visual, visual contact with this. Uh, they only had singular stuff. And Naeem didn't, uh, or Don really didn't draw any spheres at all. Uh, they did have kind of elements that were curved in nature or domed, but nothing that was actually properly spherical on it. So that, uh, that was what I really focused upon was, you know, the circular forms, because I knew that if you got the circular forms, which we can verify up against the, you know, the pictures, the video film and uh, the x-rays, then it would give a lot more credence to your other data as well, which I haven't gone into in great depth. I'm hoping that you guys would go into that because it's a lot more exciting when you guys do. And I, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for doing this uh, and, and sending your data on this target. Um, yeah, and I look forward to you guys sharing with each other your data and we'll add the other guys that aren't here this evening, their videos to this video as well as, as a separate nature. So, great, as great, great sketches. Oh my God, amazing <laughs> sketches. All of you got great corresponding, you know, what I call wow. visual data for this target. Yeah. I think your other data all has some very big crossover points as well. Um it's a very yes. interesting thing. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think Darby has like, the hexagonal part. I've got exactly the outer sh the outer shell of the of the round things being with hexagonal patterns, which is really, really odd. Yeah. Like exactly the hexagonal parts all over. <gasps> it's really odd. Excellent. <laughs> well, Dimi, as you were here first, you want to go first with, with yours? Yes, my presentation, I made it, uh, I... I I put it some of my uh, things into the uh, short PowerPoint. So I will go through that and uh, let's see what's next. Uh, let uh, Can I share the screen? Yeah, okay. you should be able to do, just do that straight off. Okay. Can I see it? Yeah. Um, okay. Let me try again. Jesus, what did I do? <laughs> if you want to make, uh, Dimmy, if you want to make it bigger, there's the button in the bottom right hand next to the slider there. On uh, the on the bottom on the bottom of your PowerPoint page. You need to put it into presentation mode though. Yeah. Slides. Yes. What is cover with this thing? Slideshow. That's it. Yes. Okay. That's it. Yeah, wow. So I've got this, uh, I, I've asked my chat GPT to do mm. a thing for me. So that's why I put Dying. that. Uh, okay. Uh, let's move further because I think uh, you already know what's the target, what the coordinate. And uh, so I've got the circumstations and let's say the ambient from the place and the ideogram as a metallic color, bluish, luminous glowing. And I've got energetic life forms and structure. The initial location looks like a fluid environment. I believe that it was a swamp that what was the place they got the ball from. Uh, but with cold and hot temperature altogether, 
It feel like in the past, like 70s or 80s, it feel like a, a foreign country for me, it felt like South America or something like this. Um, it felt like it was uh, carried through a vehicle or something kind mm -hmm. uh, for a place from a far distant, for space air. Uh, and also it felt like it was dropped like from a winch or something. And uh, it was from inside this um, fusiform long ellipsoid object. And also the environment felt fluid. The object felt solid, man-made, but it also felt it was damaged and broken. Uh, I've, I've seen also a flash visual of life forms around a, a table. Um, and uh, they were coming together to understand, to uh, debate, to exchange, negoti ne negotiating around an idea or a situation that was blatant or harsh. But I also think, if you recall, the bad spare, they put it on the uh, a round table and that uh, is a, a central piece of their, uh, their uh, event. And the table would uh, walk around, roll around without uh, going down. Uh, when I moved to the focus of the target, I felt it was um, something transported or moved. It was from in the air, from above ground, and it was something weird. And uh, it made me thought of the Oppenheimer and the atomic bomb. Again, I uh -huh. felt it was a round object going down from a, an, from another vehicle transported and uh, from uh, down there in the bottom was uh, a man-made kind of vehicle or another structure which was dra uh, cracked and damaged. Um, when I moved further to see what was there, I felt the need of uh, drawing this jag line around like it was vibrating or moving or in an energetic state. Um, and the man-made seems damaged for me or cracked. It has geometrical patterns on the outer surface. It was vibrating and trembling or changing its appearance. Uh, the environment was wet, cold, fluid, and watery. Again, I drew exactly what, I, what uh, as I said to you, Darby, mm. uh, the hexagonal part exactly like you put it there, which is so weird. Uh, seems like the element components of the surface can reshape themselves and change their structure on an ultra small scale. So it has also major roles like protection as an armor or weapon, a windows like kind of, of shield, uh, but it can be penetrated from outside and it looks like an intelligent design and having multi purpose. Uh, I thought. I tried to find uh, how that how did the this thing appear there? It was like popping up in a flash from nowhere. Um, in the land which which was wet, feels like scouting, collecting data, like curious. I've got an wireless glomar, and uh, I felt it was like traversing through a tube-like, through a vortex-like, mm. uh, tunnely. Um, popping up from somewhere else, I uh, I felt it was like from a, an opening, like a ringy structure. Um, felt misty, sim, semi whitish, smoky, and um, also this kind of funneling structure felt like sucking funneling tubular space energetic. Um, okay. And then I went to see what other things can do this thing. So um, I felt it, it was like when it intersected with other things, uh, some energetics happened there. So the passing or the intersection with the other man-made disturbed the proper functionality of uh, of the war of the man-made that he gets through, and cause switch on, switch off. The, so around these, it felt like it was an electromagnetic field uh, which was disturbed, kind of. Um, and also it felt like there were some baits there, put there to attract this specific 
round thing, which was the best fair, of course. Um, it felt like a conflict between two conflict between two parts, uh, because it appeared when a distress was happening, and uh, prior of that uh, was a big explosion or something that resulted in a shocking wave that quickly traveled around and seems to be a trigger popping from the area. Also, when I went to see what are the, what are the chemical from this thing, uh, I've got an LLS beryllium, a plasma, a liquid aspect, which was reshaping. And later I've got also a uh, quicksilver on that. A black material, which is from somewhere else. Somewhere else for me means not from Earth or not from usual channel uh, that we have like uh, the metallic things and it's it's very interesting because you you tell us about the spherules and i got the need to say that it was intelligent spherules exactly these words hmm. as you said and uh, they look alive uh, for me um so it was another purpose of the of this that it was a penetrating aspect um and uh, it was made from multiple from multiple atoms which felt they are intelligent it seemed there is a most effective volume from which is acting quern like the 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 most uh, effective volume from for his actions when i drew this it was like a flash visual of course i i thought i drew something else but uh, it was something round with uh, other um spheres or circles inside inside was uh, feeling like hot and cold to all together uh, in a tubular place uh, around felt like it was optical glass uh, in the outer shell also here and uh, when i moved to the energetics from there it was like bluish cold and hot together again i don't know what means that exactly i i must look into the physics of, of nuclear because there is something there of cold and hot together. Powerful, round, sphere-like, engulfing uh, the other things around, man-made or life forms, unusual, but also ellipsoid. I think the forces were kind of ellipsoid. Remind me of high voltage or electricity. Was penetrating, vibrating, and humming. It was a protecting weapon-like. Also, there is a deep down... Um, I can see that because I... This is covering, okay, there is a deep down energy, uh, it, which is the main engine, red fury. Inside looks rounded, curved, with surfaces with dim lumin, lumin, dim loom, with seamless metallic kind of materials. It gave me a sense of knowing what is happening prior to happen, uh, and that is used to scout. It pop out through a hole port like ringy structure with steamy, swishy, smoky peripheral elements through a tubular funnel, which disappears soon after. This channel uh, appear long. It felt like a passing through a wormhole like. Uh, okay, let's move further. The energetics, the main energetics is also the main mate. For, for me, what is the same thing? Um, it looks like there are multiple changes that can occur on it that are solution for what are its goals. Increasing, decreasing dimensions, destructurize its atomic elements to engulf, to pass through different mediums. When, when, and when that happened is radiating energy, uh, radiating energy is released. And the outer shell is somehow intelligent. The kind of the side effect of that is emitting out of radiation energy during the process which can stick or affect the things around or passing through and now we come to the anomalous aspects because i i went to see some life from there and for me it was like uh, buzzing vibrating together on top of another uh, of, of another swerving maybe i will i was wrong here but i don't know it felt like a hive, kind of a hive. Feels like there are multi, a lot of swarming life forms together, uh, like <clears throat> in one body, gather around something, an idea of protecting, signaling, acting as one all together. 
There seems to be organized like a hive type of gathering. It feels unnatural as like a, a response of something menacing them. And I drew that. And I've got this image. And of course, an LL is mounted. And again, these life forms around something round in an, in an inside of a man-made. And uh, when I moved to the element of the outer shell, uh, I felt it was like the hexagon here. Uh, and it was like multi multiple spherical black metallic liquid inside, acting like a liquid, but it was like kind of a nano material or nano elements, really, really small. It act also like a membrane integral to the entire inseparable from it. And it was also pouring liquid, like a quicksilver. It was not liquid like water. It was something much dense, like quicksilver. I have an well as a quicksilver. So it will fill the gaps to unite everything together. It's a component that is controlled in two ways. Um, meaning it has its own algorithm of acting like a lesson learned, like in programming and can be controlled by others, uh, by other factors from within. And uh, again, I've got the unexplained from it, uh, which is made from multiple atoms intelligent. I also said that prior. It felt like I cannot find this anywhere uh, in our physics. Um, also my object, which is the round here, when he's uh, penetrating uh, environment or objects, it's change and collect information from each passing and it reshapes itself. It collects data on things and kind of emotion. It was not like real emotion. It's like collecting everything together. It was weird anyhow. And it's acting like, uh, okay, it's in, in a large scale, that's it. <laughs> because I already said other things. So thank you. That's it. Great data, Dimi. So thank you. Fabulous. do you think it was a uh, an anomalous thing or do you think it's like the uh, the description or the held belief that it's some kind of viral? No, thing? it was an anomalous thing. <laughs> no, it's it was something not known in our physics, not known in 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 Maybe Smithsonian would know. I don't know. But I don't know about it. I, I, I look for it in many, many other places, but nothing pop up. Absolutely nothing that could be like that. Excellent. So it's not felt human. It, those atoms that were intelligent or made like in an ultra mm -hmm. type of scale, nanoscale, it's weird i don't know Excellent. but it was a scout for me for me it was a scout and uh, somebody was baiting this and uh, the scout appeared to see what's happening i don't know yeah much more else very That's interesting <laughs> thanks Demi. um Thank darby you. you were you were next on the scene uh, and you're next on my screen here would you like to go next sounds great first piece of data that came in was uh an image of what seemed to me a slumped over pilot type figure like he was strapped into an ejection uh seat or a parachute or something like that but i had the sense that he was a pilot of a large uh, vehicle a flying vehicle of some kind and uh this landscape here that you see came up throughout the session i had buildings on the right and then a flat area that i aol as an airport and then this elevated area with a dome and uh flora uh, natural area, which now that I'm, you know, I know what this, the target was, I'm thinking maybe that's a representation of the sphere that was found out in nature and in, in the woods, I believe. And uh, I had the general sense that this was like an airport kind of vibe. And uh, don't, I am... sorry, sorry, Darby, don't discount the uh, airport data though, because if you remember, the tasking was also to describe the, uh, the origin as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, and military plays into this as well. If I had, I had, had to guess, it felt like a military sort of airport. Um, 
And then what I did was I was drawn to this structure over here, which seemed like kind of a dome shaped structure. And so I embodied it. And um, reading some of this, I, I say I'm large. I have cylindrical objects stacked horizontally and a grid inside of me. They're for some type of power. Um, there's wires inside of me. And then I describe having electronics and wires that go underground. And I say, if someone would to, were to ask me what my function was, I would say that I catch things and protect things. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually embodying a structure, if I'm embodying the, uh, the Betts sphere. Uh, and then uh, I, uh, I have an image here of one life form holding another one, or perhaps it's actually just a suit, but it felt like a pilot suit of some type. And um, felt like there was an older gentleman, that, you know, in control, in charge that was somehow involved in this. I, I kind of feel silly for putting this guy in here, but it was just a brief image. And I happened to have just seen a day or two before a picture of Aleister Crowley. And he did look similar to him, except he had a, a mustache. So, no, I'm not saying Aleister Crowley is involved in, in the bet sphere, but uh, there was a guy that was sitting at a desk and had the sense that he was looking at a screen. Uh, he seemed sort of grumpy. And I asked, I did a movement command, what's the man doing? And had this image of a, of a magnet and this here, which I probed and, and felt like he was doing something related to electromagnetics causing some type of destructions, so make of that what you will. But then uh, that directly then went into this, airplane like data again um so i don't know like if i had to really let my imagination fly i'm thinking did this guy make something crash using some type of technology um there's some other data here i'm going to skip over but it involves uh some type of a, a monument commemorating something that went down something that that went downwards or crashed or something um we have here a barbell shaped object. And when I probed it, it seemed like it was a vehicle. It seemed like it, you know, there was actually people inside and that was connected to a sphere that um, ha had wires going into the sphere and there was energetics associated with the sphere and the sphere was humming military personnel that looked like uh, in the States, uh, like an Air Force uh, type of hat was involved with it. And then there is a, uh, I say, uh, move 100 feet uh, from the structure. And there's this sort of silvery gray spherical shape that has movement. And um, I feel like it's vibrating. I feel like it's hollow, uh, vibrates when I knock it. And here's where it gets a little weird. I'm Demi, Demi, I'm glad that you had uh, some of these guys in your data. There's an, another weirdo that, uh, in session two. Uh, and I'm not the only one, but... I embodied the object, the spherical object here. And I say, uh, there's multiple life forms inside me. There's lights inside of me. I fly around. I'm made of metal. I have plasma in me. I have electronics in me. I have a rigid, rigid structure made of thin metallic sections coming from a central point. Uh, and there's some, there's a bell shape, there's weapons. And so here's where it gets a little weird. There's an, 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 there's an angelic like figure carrying objects in his arms like he's delivering or giving some type of materials to someone related to this object. And uh, this guy popped up. Uh, he's he's not a your classical gray alien dude. He had irises, and I felt like he was aware of me. And um, I uh, I got I guess I got a little spooked because I felt like he was aware of me. And so I gave myself, I had enough, so I, I gave myself a movement command to go to a helpful element for the target. And I felt like I was like off planet somewhere, like totally far away from the target. Um, there was some structures, but what, what stood out was this weird yellow suit with a weird pro, uh, elongated helmet. No idea. Um, and then wrapping up session one, um, 
I, I go standing a hundred feet in front of the structure and I see this dome shape out in nature. Now, again, am I, is this the sphere and this is just a metaphorical representation of the sphere or is this something else? If I had to guess, I'd say it's a metaphorical representation of the sphere. And then uh, I got this fla flash of data. Um, one of the, your, you know, your classic radar uh, sphere that you, that you've seen before. And Demi, that's uh that's the data that you were pointing out, which is similar to your data. Um, so going to session or session two. Um, so some some of session two had the had something that was projecting out of something, and that came through different ways. Um there's this came through this way and then it, it came through more it looked like sort of a bug like object and here you're looking at it looking down at it and there, here's a side view something some kind of column coming out um another view of that there's a lot of uh you know obviously a lot of data here that i'm not going to read i may record a longer video about it um I got to a place where I felt like I was in some kind of command and control center. And the way I got there was I did gave myself a movement command to go where Daz wanted me to get information about the, the target. Uh, anyway, I felt like uh, this was underwater and there were multiple life forms and I was kind of, it, it felt somewhat high tech you know not super high tech i felt like it had been around for a while i looked for a helpful element and i saw one of these guys again was didn't seem like it was the same guy from before this guy i i was actually behind it look and i it looked like a headed cobra like the back of a cobra uh, a hooded cobra rather back of a hooded cobra and i went around to look at it and uh it looks sort of more reptilian uh, and so I said, uh, if I were this life form, what would I say I was doing? And I said, I'm maneuvering my spaceship. I see something like a cluster of grapes. AOL, this is a cluster of many vehicles like the one I am in. So that was, this is a general, general concept is that this smaller spherical object that I was in was part of many, many, many spherical objects that were a part of a larger central area. And I went inside that central area at some point, and it was like it felt like a, uh, a, a an airport uh, waiting room where people were getting ready to get into their their vehicles. And they felt like pilots. And Demi, you had several pieces of data that reminds me of this this data where we have one object connecting by wires or something to another object, and in my data. I was looking at this other object as like a ship. So the one on top is like the, the main ship, the main waiting room where there, and then this is the smaller one, although it's not small in my drawing, but that's how it came through for me. Um, up here, uh, we have, I, I, I'm probing myself, or I'm giving myself a movement command, go to what's most helpful about the piece of data that Daz retasked me on for session two. Um, I talk about it be, there being a sphere. It's metallic, silvery color. There's um, like little cylinders going into the sphere that almost look like coils. And these coils might be enclosed inside these, what I'm calling a dome or the sphere, but I'm not sure. I drew them outside, but uh, and so there's a sphere within a sphere. And uh, this little thing here, this is um, some type of electromagnetic radiation or waves that were coming off of it. Um, I embodied the structure. I got that. Uh, I said, what's my function? Frequency shifting, Doppler, butterfly, radio, telescope. Um, what, I'm, what am I doing here? I just got like electric cracks. Uh, kind of feeling or sounds with the wavy energetic pattern. Um, 
And wrapping up session two is some data with pilots that that seem like uh, that pilot data guys getting ready to to pilot their vehicles. So a lot of I always find it difficult to go through some of this data uh, because there's a lot, but that's a snapshot of some of the main themes. And uh, thanks. Yeah, awesome data again, and again lots of crossovers. Uh, yeah. Alien people that you met sound a bit scary. Wouldn't like to meet those. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I have to ask you the same question though. Um, you know, because we got the the two theories of this over that it's something mysterious or something man made and engineered for in industrial use. What would what do you say your data points to? Well, if I have to just go with the narrative of my data, uh, taking it all together and putting it in my brain and hitting the button on the blender and and coming out with a, a theory, I would say that it is based upon technology that was given to humans by non-human life forms. And the technology is a part of a larger piece of technology <clears throat> that uh, it, the military it has some connection to the military. It's definitely not a ball bearing uh, as was one of the theories it's just yeah. a, it's not a ball bearing it's got energetics inside it's got electronics uh and um this is part of a larger piece of technology and a larger there's a lot going on that this is just one little piece yeah. of so uh excellent uh, yeah yeah thanks for that. and just as a note if if any of you guys want to do the longer video that's that's great as well and i'll we'll add that you know we'll add that as a additional to the site like like we, we've done in previous stuff as well great excellent carl you're up next then you guys i've got so much overlapping data it's uh, <laughs> unbelievable um yeah uh, hang on let's get it done and put it in presentation mode So in um I tried to kind of re-summarize what I was talking about and I did talk about land. Um is it where the ball is now or is it where it came from? Um it's quite surprising what I've got, but I've also got lots of green. So um then it talks about a biological and um there were biologicals involved in finding the ball. Um, mine looks quite uh, surprisingly similar to both of yours. But it could, if you really try, it could look like the, you know, the chappy with that sort of very 70s moustache and sideburns. And then, of course, because I'm so drawn to energy, um, most of my session was about the energetic, uh, the energy inside the ball. So that's the greenery that I have. It's called, I called it the dragon's lair, but I've got a very kind of like a Machu Picchu vibe, you know, very high, lush green mountains and this place inside a mountain that's very protected and hidden. So what that is, I have, you know, we can only imagine. There's my chappy. <laughs> my <body. laughs> so I don't suppose he looks that human, but, you know, I actually, I had given him um, small clawed feet. So that's a pretty good indicator that it ain't a human. Uh, he's exhibiting commanding intelligence and he's ruling over a large area space. So it could correspond to the alien presence, which is, you know, suggested that it's controlling the, the sphere. Um, I call him the Naga or the snake god. And it, I say it feels impossible, unbelievable when talking about the creature. Um, when I go onto energetic space, this is where I, you know, really expand. Um, 
I'm describing a dense, plasmatic and flowing space which resembles a vortex or a donut, don, donut shaped form with streaming energy. So a connection to frequencies or scalar energy. And that's possibly relating to the energetic um, qualities of the, the, the sphere and the poles. So I've very much got this scalar energy. Aorta, that's the vortex. The, I'm thinking of the heart aorta. That's a vortex. The heart's actually a, an energetic Thing. And so right in my very first session, I'm working on this energy and I'm watching the energy. It's my very first um, aesthetic impact. It feels incomprehensible <laughs> and the vortex. So as you can see, it's a vortex, but I've also got little balls inside that. So in the symbolism, I go into my mythical or symbolic concepts. I talk about the gates of the river Styx, like the passage between one realm and the other, the divine spark of human redemption. I tend to get a bit poetic with, when, with energy. So the things that I see um, give me a deeper metaphysical aspect to the energy. And I think this reflects the mysterious and otherworldly nature of the, the sphere and its phenomena. Um, I did. It does look as though um, the the it might be a gateway to other realms or a conduit for interstellar energy and communication. Now I have something very similar to to Demi in this one. Um, it. Yeah, the broader narrative around the Beth Sphere explores the implications of the existence on humanity's understanding of the universe and its place within the universe. But there's this hypothesis that it's sending and receiving. And look, Demi, there's your tunnel, right? So I'm saying it's fourth dimension. And this, I'm trying to show the curvature through space and the vortex energy coming through. And that's how the signal gets through. It's curved space. Um, get, maybe it's been get, sending and receiving. You see, this is drawing the inside and the, the, the plasma energy, but out of there, there's an eye. So it's a meta metaphor, it's a metaphorical eye. I mean, it could just be the little ball inside, but it comes out looking like an eye. <laughs> there's your Crowley with the horns as well. <laughs> so th there's something about communicating with other realms. And there, um, I'm drawing inside the ball, but I've got this, this, this horn, the energy is going around this horn shape, and that's the divine spark of you. Now, I have no idea where that came from, it just was that voice in my head. Um, this horn thing it reminds me of Mount Ararat, and again, that's a spiritual destination. And I go to soul being born, Saturn, because the energies remind me of Saturn's rings. I keep, I kept getting the round thing of Saturn's rings, the energy. So there's the ball, and there's my drawing of the inside of the ball of the plasma energy. I've got uh, toroidal, the planet's hum, you know, atmosphere. It feels like, it felt to me like, Again, you know, Demi was saying it's it's nano, something nano. In, in At some stage in my session, I say, I don't know whether I'm looking at micro or macro. I don't know whether it's a planet or whether it's microscopic because it's like just this pulsation between the two. But I honestly think it's connected from one to the other. So um, I kept drawing this ball and... But here I actually have, it's a, th it's a thought, it, it, it's like an experiment. So maybe the ball was sent as an experiment, you know, for communication and time travel. So that would be the way you can, I've been reading research about using plasma for traveling, for doing 
the in, interdimensional travel, the fifth dimension, the Lion's Gate portal. So I'm I'm looking at the energy being able to go between. And um, so just to finish with, these are my summaries. Um, it, the space feels flowing like frequencies or scalar energy. The way it flows, the shape it creates reminds me of an aorta. It feels thick, dense, and connected, reminding me of nebula and thick energy flowing like lava. It feels like the flow is in a kind of vortex, a donut-shaped form. Again, that's your toroidal energy. Streaming through the hole in the middle from the outside, very much like a Rodin coil. That's scalar energy. At one point, it felt like being in the atmosphere of Saturn rings, and it felt like the plasmatic energy of a human soul being born. It's plasma, you know, I'm on about plasma, and plasma is, that's the way for interdimensional travel, most probably. The space feels like plasma, it feels dense, gelatinous, but it's also containing these connections and flow and energy. So, um, it feels like these are frequencies and light and frequencies of things, like the hum of a planet's free. I, I was getting a hum sound of, you know, of the energy. It feels like being in the atmosphere of a planet with towers and toroidal energy. It feels like a portal, like time travel, like another dimension, like soul energy and like creation. It feels like interstellar energy and connection. That's the and the connection to the Lions Gate portal of Sirius. That's that's it. So how do I go out? Excellent date again. And stop then. Well done. And as you know, we've uh, we've only got you three guys here. I, I the seven were the target, and you can already see huge amounts of crossover data from from just the you know less than half of the people that were at the target. Um, of course, you know, as I said, it, a lot of it we can't feed back upon. Um, but you know, we can feed back upon a portion of it with the the shape and form and of it. And you you all nailed that. Love your I love your color sketches as well, Coral. It's a nice di nice dimension adding color to the RV sketches. I think a lot of us need to do I, that more. I tell you something funny that I took the my summary. And uh, the Wikipedia page of the baseball, right? And I asked uh, ChatGPT, what do they have in common? And ChatGPT said, absolutely nothing. Oh. <laughs> because yours talks about symbology and metaphysical yeah. stuff. And obviously, Wikipedia <laughs> is completely materialistic. Yeah. So. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Yes, absolutely yeah. nothing. Bear in, bear in mind as well that um, I don't know if you saw the articles about the that that group of um, military paid debunkers that are actually going into Wikipedia and oh, yeah. rewrite, rewriting yeah, yeah, every absolutely. every article that deals with well, mysteries. Even, even remote viewing is a pseudoscience. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. it didn't used to be. <laughs> yeah. But great data, guys. Um, it's just a shame the other guys, uh, you know, couldn't make it and show you show you their data as well. So I'm afraid you're probably going to have to, you know, I can I can put all the uh, paper sessions in in a, in a folder yeah. so you can look at those. You saw the sketches anyway uh, and the correlation there, um, but they also Amazing got lots sketches. of um... Amazing sketches. Oh my yeah. god! The Henny had the ball yeah. with the toroidal energy inside. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. They all got yeah. that kind of stuff as well. So you know, it. Yeah, and again, you know, I'd have to ask you, Carl, the question as well. Uh, is this something mysterious or is it, a, <laughs> you know, a man Well, I mean, it's, that, that's all my session talked about, so. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have to be honest, you know, this was a target I wanted to be done for years, but I, you know, I truthfully do not have any um, intent one way or the other on this. You know, for me, it is a bit of a mystery. Uh, but I wouldn't say I'm wedded to I'm wedded to the belief system that this is an, an extraterrestrial thing of any kind. It, for me, it's just like a a very strange you know mystery. Um, so I I I can honestly say that that data of it being extraterrestrial did not come from me as the Tasker influence in this because 
although I'm interested in it, I'm not that interested in the whole story. You know, I'm not wedded to any theory of it whatsoever. Um, but it's interesting to see what you guys come up with, um, especially because I did ask, you know, a little bit for the origin of this as well. And there was quite a lot of, of space-based stuff and the uh, non-human elements as well, because I, I can't remember what the other guys said, but just li listening to you guys go through it, and there's Dimmy with her, you know, typical grey type thing. Um, but both um, Darby and Carl mentioned snake-like in theirs as well. Um, yes. Darby said you know, cobra-like, and then you know, Carl said snake. You don't see, when you're talking about non-human entities in, in anything to do with this kind of stuff, you don't see terms like snake-like hardly at all. You know, and I and believe me, I've read hundreds of books on abductions and stuff like that. And yeah, we do hear kind of stories about reptilian type stuff, but not an awful lot. But nothing where snake like is mentioned, you know, all uh, by two remote viewers in the same project. So I find that very interesting. Mm. Yeah. And again, it didn't come from me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think that at all. But well done, guys. Yeah, really good data. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see what you think of everyone else's data as part of the, the general mix on this one as well. Yeah, I like that. Hi, everyone. It's Henny from the Half Fire Club. And in the next 10 minutes, I am going to show you uh, the raw data that I had on our latest target, which was 29017711. That's, that's this target, and it turned out to be the bad sphere. In these next 10 minutes, I am going to focus on the raw data that I had in my two sessions. I am not going to get into in-depth analysis or putting uh, my data into larger context. I am planning to do a separate video for that. So let's jump right in. In my session, in my first session, if I recall correctly, I am showing uh, an outdoors area, which is surrounded by forests and it's on a hilly land. And there is a smaller enclosed space, much like a clearing in that foresty area with several man-mates on it or in this enclosed area. And I am seeing a few biologicals outside basically witnessing something. I am also hearing some odd sounds circling. The best sphere was found on March 27th in 1974 by Antoine Gary and their 21-year-old son Terry, who were inspecting the damage time by a small bushfire near their property uh, when they stumbled upon a shiny metal ball with a small triangle imprinted on its surface. In one of my sessions, I am showing a grid map uh, and pinpointing to a location of an object which um, resembles uh, the area where, where the best sphere was found. What is it made of? Why I'm focusing on that question? So interestingly, my when I started doing my first session, my first session was basically showing a biological using a raw material, going through a process in order to create objects. Uh, from a raw material, and the raw material itself had some properties that landed odd properties to the object that he created. This is basically the first session's main focus, so I'm going to go through the logic of what I had in my session. So uh, first, let's see what, what I was picking up as raw material for the objects that were later created. Uh, the raw material I describe as natural, mainly. It is splinter chipped off, hard faceted smooth, dark gray with silver haze, lightweight and kind of crystalline and shardy. And it reminds me of a shard of coal. And later on, I again describe it as dark gray, cylindrical, purified, refined, palletized, compressed into a capsule. Now, the main point of focusing on this natural resource in my session was because I was picking up that this natural resource was being used by a biological, and this biological was intending to use this as a resource for something, for creating objects. The best sphere itself is currently 
thought of to be made of stainless steel and the stainless steel the composition of stainless steel is from iron and coal if you look at iron and coal my sketch and description and my association with shard of coal is matching uh, the supposed composition of the bat sphere how was it made like i told you part of my session is focusing on how the natural material is being used and transformed into object. Uh, in my description, I am seeing a biological powdering up, mixing, melting, casting, cooling, forging, testing, and prototyping. And as you can see, I am even drawing uh, like a process sketch. The first step of the process is a crystalline a raw material form. Uh, then it is powdered up then it is molten and cast and then from this molten cast uh, several uh, different shape objects are being created i um, describe here and sketch here for uh, the second one is a spherical ball who made it my session actually absolutely points to human uh, I describe him several times in my two sessions. He is described as human male. He has light skin, light brown hair. He is balding and he is studying a raw material, trying to use this raw material to create objects from it. And then later on, I am showing him doing a handiwork. So he is like putting a, a together, hand, handicrafting, assembling something. Again, I, I describe him as humanoid male. He's very careful. He's handicrafting. He's putting together. He's putting the last place, uh, pieces in place together of a prototype. So I was I was describing him as using a raw material to create a prototype. What was interesting is even at this point where all I was seeing is a, a natural looking raw material and a an absolutely human looking human. I started picking up something weird about the target or some something weird about the intent of the biological. I described him as someone who is dabbling in the unknown. He is experimenting with something supernatural. He is using material, creating objects in order to harness or source some kind of powers. This whole dabbling in the unknown uh, and experimenting with the supernatural reminded me on like summoning or invocation. Uh, very, very weird feelings that I had during this this part of the session. So it was confusing to see a normal human or a normal human looking male biological using what looks like a normal natural material uh, in a in an odd out of the ordinary sort of supernatural way but this is what came here and later we will see that I had even more data on this like weird oddity that was going around with this target. What is inside this object? Why I had two sketches that were describing oddities. One of them is showing like a round thing uh, around which the field is normal. The magnetic or electromagnetic field is normal, but inside it, it's some kind of an electromagnetic void. And in the middle, I, I am showing what looks like guitar pucks. From what I gathered, uh, the bat sphere has been x-rayed and they found that the ball has varying like rings of varying density. And in the middle, there is th three different sized uh, dense spots, which they don't know what it is, but my data was suggesting also that there is something in the middle. The man-made itself is gray, silvery colored. It's not that hard, so I describe it as uh, rather lightweight. It's round and it's punched out intermittently. So now we arrive to the odd properties. What were the odd properties that we found with respect to what was recorded about the bat sphere? The bats gave interviews to several newspapers, and in these newspapers, 
stories about the ball humming, rolling around on its own volition, vibrating, emitting high-pitched sounds, voices and banging doors and glass shattering have been mentioned. My session also has weird things going on. For example, right in the beginning when I'm describing the raw material, I was picking up on the fact that this natural material is emitting something eerie and powerful and it is imbued with special properties, even in the raw material for it is resonant and the emission that is coming out of it is sonic sound related it is creating a loopy sound effect i continued with this trying to describe the odd properties that that the raw material that was used to create these objects had the best i can describe is it could like suddenly emit a field of energy that ended up blurring uh, it had like a blurring effect on the surrounding and something about shifting phases. So I had this idea of phasing or shifting and doppelgangers, doppelganging. Before this effect happens, an object looks like a normal solid physical object, but once this emission goes out, this phasing shifting emission goes out from that natural material, everything becomes fuzzy, doubled, phased apart, blurry. This natural material has an emission that is inducing a weird state, and what looks looked physical and normal before, it looks not really physical, but fuzzy and blurry after being subjected to this emission. I also uh, was picking up uh, on a repetitive sonic pingy sound. Again, odd pop properties continue. I was noting here that when this emission is on, when, when the em emission is activated, then this object is acting, impacting, moving by design, and it can mimic sentience or intelligence. And in another sketch, I am showing that when it is online or activated, there is this... Uh, spherical, blurry tidal wave coming out of it. And the oddities didn't stop there. When I moved inside the object, I got the idea of something cryptic and informational. In an abstract sketch, I tried to liken it to something sequential, mathematical, numerical, combinatorial. The inside of this sphere looked like full of, of a phase matrix or a vector of, of information or vectors of information. And it reminded me of a server or a data bank that's somehow combination logged. And in my session, I was showing how this object is giving grief and a headache to many people who try to unlock it. I specifically saw one man repeatedly who was puzzled and trying to crack or unlock the object, trying to decode. He was looking for a pattern, analyzing. He was using technological means in order to get a better idea of the object at hand. This is all I had for this target in raw data form. I hope I will have some time and do a more in-depth analysis on uh, this target. See you in the next round. Hey friends, it's Dennis Nappy the second here with the Hellfire Remote Viewing Club. I'm going to review my data for target 29017711. The Bets Sphere. Um Really fun sessions that I went through here on this one. My data, I feel there's a lot of uh, imagination and noise in here. I think I definitely have elements of, uh, of target contact and describing the sphere. I haven't had a chance yet to see how it matches up with the team's data. Um, but you be you be the judge and decide. It's, it's interesting. I had um, data of the sphere or this orb that I called it coming from the sky and, and crashing downwards into the earth. Um, but I also very specifically stated that whatever this is, it's from the earth. Uh, and I'll go over that little data point there too. So I'll show the high points. You know, I'm going to cherry pick my data here. Um, ultimately, like I said, I don't have the most confidence in my session. There's a lot of noise. 
Uh, I definitely went on some AOL tangents here, exploring my imagination more than uh, than the actual orb itself. But that's okay. Lessons learned for me. I enjoyed the experience. So let's share my data with you. And we'll go from there. Okay. So session one here, uh, my immediate impressions, um, I wrote natural event and I highlighted here man-made and then just cruising past my low-level data. This was my first scene. I believe they were walking, the bet sound was walking through a forest in Florida. So this does not look like any scenery in Florida. Um, but I did pick up on something that was witnessed or observed uh, by a man. And, you know, the, uh, the one gentleman, I can't remember his name now, um, was one of the spokespersons for the family. There was a 21-year-old um, young man there who found the sphere with his family, with his parents. And then just scrolling down, uh, there was a connection between a life and event. That's kind of vague. Um, but again, if you're looking here, it's just this, this sphere shape, the, you know, the yellow arcs there. I'd say it's, you know, um, like a work call, yay, elements of it. Again, more uh, curved lines here, the, even the circular head here, I'd say elements of the sphere. Um, but I was, I don't know what I was queuing on here, pain, pressure, signals, awareness. Now the, the family did think that, you know, they did really think a lot about this and it was stressful and curiosity as they were trying to figure out what this, um, what this object was, what this sphere in fact was. So maybe it's tied into all the thoughts that were, uh, that were coming to them with that. But you also still continue to see that circular shape here. And then here we go. At this point here is when I, I think my screen, here we go, is when I, I think started to hone in on it. I had this uh, sphere, obviously here, I labeled it as core white. I had hot energetics and vibrating, and then it was soothing to the touch. I did have an AI and aesthetic impact that it was fascinating. And I just wrote it's waiting, oscillating, warming, preparing, charging, or absorbing. And I had the sense that that was in regards to energy. It was absorbing energy as it was charging for something. And again, I'm not sure. Now, they were, the Betts family claimed that the sphere rolled around by itself. And it would uh, repeat, I guess, when the guitar was being played, it would repeat music back. Um, I'm not sure. But maybe that's what we're picking up on here. Uh, where did it come from is a question that came to mind for me. Uh, and that was the big thing, you know, with the investigations they were doing in the 70s, trying to figure it out. But my answer to that was man-made, and then I had natural elements, but it was labeled foreign or a foreign body. But here it is again, a sphere. And I had this coming down that it hit land and was glowing. And I had this as like a big, you know, meteorite type, of, not big, but um, I think my size is about right. But this meteorite type of thing is what I was visualizing here. Um, again... If you're looking, I have these the sphere again coming out, these circular shapes here, which I think I was trying to get to the target, just didn't quite get there. And then talking about energetics here. And then looking at ideas and concepts. Again, I think my, my data was very vague here. Uh, I should have gone back and done a better job describing my low-level data. I, was, I think I was trying too hard to tell a story here. Um... But it did seem, I wrote down, almost as if there's too much to process because the event is so surreal, so life-changing. One lacks experience and knowledge to process and understand, almost short-circuiting and rewiring the brain, new neural pathways. So that could be speaking on the family that discovered this or the people that were interested in it. It was confusing. It was upsetting. There was a search for understanding, which is on point. Uh, a question of why me? Am I chosen? Eh, again, maybe, maybe not. I got a sense of radiation. Um to me, the viewer during this, uh, like it was pushing me back. Like I felt the sense of fear, like I should stop again. Maybe that was my overactive imagination. I'm not sure. Uh, but then I cued on my stage five that this was witnessed. I had observed, looked at by whom it was censored or it was people were cautious about it. Um, something about being blocked, but there was a sense of awe and wonder, passion, and then a sense of escape or an event horizon. Community Council of the Republic, anger and disbelief um and that's pretty much it the rest talking about wandering i mean they were wandering through the woods when they found this object here uh and then they just tried to figure it out and i turned this into more of a space thing and a universal spiritual experience here with my data um so overall i think i have elements of, of target contact here one of the things i 
uh, I didn't, I don't know if I shared that sketch or not, but I, I had, I did write down that this came from a factory. Let me, you know what? I do want to share that with all of you. Sorry, I'm remembering my data here. Um, so I, I had this sense that it came from a factory and then it, they discovered it by accident. Maybe it's in my first session here. I'm in my first session. Let me go to my second session. Oh, rookie mistake here, guys. This is my session two here. I thought it just went through my first session. So there's a little bit more on this. Again, queuing all witnessed here. And I had another sketch of the sphere. This could be energy radiating outwards from it. Uh, it was humming, oscillating. It was expanding and contracting. And I had this sense here that life observes an object or an, or an orb floating and hovering. Now, it wasn't floating and hovering, but he did claim that it rolled around by itself. I think I was just trying to get too paranormal here. Um, probably some more noise here. Trying to describe the object. It was vibrating or resistant. I had buoyant. A layer of energy was surrounding it that had a resistance or magnetic. Was it electrostatic discharge? An energetic layer possibly uh, surrounding an inner solid layer. It was very smooth and metallic. And, and uh, according to a naval study, it was just a ball of steel. Um, and it was smooth. It was metallic. I had uh, that there was a seam across the center, which I don't think that it had. It did have a chip in it. Um, and then I had a thick shell housing a liquid and or open space. Energy radiates out of the seam. Now, again, they said there was a chip in it. Maybe that's what it was. Or maybe if you zoom up closer, you have I had all these little pores uh, on it, these little circles that energy was coming out of. Uh, and it had electric smells, earth smells, and, and just wet smells. Sorry, it's bouncing around here. I took a look here at any subspace aspects of it. Again, there's the theme of the sphere and energy coming out of it. Um, and I just said that it permeates layers of reality. I think I'm getting a little too woo here. Uh, again, there's this life discovering it. And then I had I had a like a Middle Eastern Bedouin with uh, you know the head garb and the head wrap on. Um, I don't think that's what I saw. And, and like an Indiana Jones feel. What was the point of origin? Here we go. I had this almost as if coming from the sky, hitting the ground, boom. Uh, but I had I highlighted Earth here. And I wrote, but where did it come from? I feel hesitant to say Earth, as if this is unexpected and undesired, not what we hoped for. It has an inner plasticity, or uh, has an inner planetary or interdimensional feel, but I'm getting Earth. So basically what I'm saying here is that I felt there'd be a sense of disappointment that it's not some kind of alien thing. Uh, and when you read the uh, some of the stuff out there online, the Navy tested it. They said it was Earth-based. Uh, and a couple of scientists tested it. They said it was Earth-based. Uh, again, we could take conspiracy in a bunch of different directions there. But according to my data and some of the feedback I'm finding, it sounds like it was Earth-based. Uh, it was tested in a laboratory, but I was looking for the point of origin here. So I had a lab here. Uh, and then something accidental, an accident, it slipped away. And it was it was comical. I felt laughing about it. If they only knew it was an accident, a mishap. But what I meant by that was they're putting all this energy into like having this experience with this sphere. And however it got there was somebody's mistake. And I tried to look at that and I had this object that was set, uh, that was contained, but there was pressure applied to each side and it burst upwards because the pressure was too much. So the pressure came on each side and it went up and it moved up at a very fast speed. And I wrote that it left an energetic trail and a sparkle. And that workers just kind of watched it go up like, uh-oh, as it went up into the air. Um, I, I was, again, getting a desert location, open at night, expansive. Again, this is this is probably off. Um, and that's pretty much it. Talking about escaping and fleeing. And I think I got too spiritual or uh, metaphysical on that with my AOLs. Um, but so elements of it, ultimately, I think that uh, according to my data, uh, it was a curious object. And the fact that it, I, I perceived that it had liquid or open space in it, I think could account for the uneven movements that the thing had when it's, as it rolled around or wobbled. So I could have been onto something there, uh, some of the energy around it. Um, and ultimately that it was made here on Earth, which is what my data says and some of the feedback I found says. So. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. This is uh, Dennis Snappy the second for uh, Hellfire Remote Viewing Club. So, thanks for watching. Hey, this is Naeem. I'm going to uh, present some of my data here for the Betts Sphere Target two nine zero one seven seven one one. 
never heard of this, not familiar with this um, story or, or target at all. But um, let me run through my data. And I haven't seen any of the other viewers' data yet, so be interested to see if it um you know if there's any overlap here. But uh yeah, my first gestalt was land. And here I see um multiple life forms. This felt like a meeting place, uh, a conversation or a safe spot, almost like a negotiation, ambassadors talking something out. I uh, felt like high level communication actions actions and consequences in more of a rural area um like a safe zone that they can operate in peace and the sense here was almost like et or some kind of foreign uh, foreign life my next gestalt was another land gestalt here i see a uh, you know, a, a circular craft. Um, sense here was someone saw this. Um, there's a witness to this. There's government officials may be involved, some kind of treaty, <clears throat> occupants, pilots, negotiations, a peace treaty. I get the word zero space. Uh, someone's trying to set the record straight. Like these these people have a manifesto or a manifest. They're co-conspirators and they're I get the sense that there's life inside. Now this was probably the clearest and most vivid thing I saw. Um there's some videos online, you know, I don't know if they're real, but I remember there's these, you know, kind of grainy, older looking videos of people standing on like a hovercraft and it's like you know flying around uh, i saw something like that a person standing on a small circular you know platform with a handle it's kind of like a steering handlebars um moving pretty fast i wrote life on a structure with the platform and controls, it hovers and floats. It's moving like a hovercraft or a hoverboard. The sense of like maglev diffusion, like maybe World War II era that around that time. Uh, like this would be compared to green energy or something similar. Uh, mechanical marvel. Uh, the life would be specially trained to to use this. It moves fast, it's secret and hidden. And then the next thing I saw was uh, a large domed structure in a pretty barren area, like a desert area. Uh, domed, curved, and the sense here is like, you know, like mothership or, or something like that. Um, a landing site blocked off. Um, there's a clearing here. A site to behold. Words like paraterrestrial or interworld. A secret hidden program. Like there may be a runway near here. And uh, probing deeper into this, the, the what... Felt like there's a negotiation or a trade, a communication or a transfer of knowledge, top secret, like ambassadors of two groups meet as like delegates. Why? Preservation, longevity, lending a helping hand to one in need. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, it secures the future sense of an eye for an eye, a technology trade, like a life, it's like giving a lifeline. Where? Um, it felt like American property, like a governmental property on American soil, somewhere off limits. Um, a delegation, a negotiation, a transfer of products and knowledge. And... Probe was like, they'll take this to the grave. You know, they're not going to 
tell anyone about this. Um, I saw a person in a helmet with like a breathing apparatus, a vest geared up, almost like something a, a pilot would wear. Uh, a pilot in training in a kind of an exchange program, learning new technology, futuristic stuff, sworn to secrecy. Again, like they'll take this to the grave. Uh, teachers from beyond. Paramilitary, paramilitant, future ops is the sense I got there. They're learning the ins and outs of some kind of new technology. And I did a breakout of this, you know, concept of a technology trade. Um, it felt like it had to do with metallurgy and instant fabrication, uh, solid state things with no moving part, with no moving parts. Maybe there would be some silicone involved there. Manufacturing of materials, molding and fabrication, uh, plasma, plasmid moving or transferring energy and uh, this transfer of knowledge it felt like technological advancements stealth uh, things being borrowed and mimicked certain trade secrets the inner workings of propulsion and i saw these like three spheres there um, even something to do with life extension health blood plasma age reduction or preservation yeah and that's that's my data on this one um so you know i i would say possibly technology related um with the with the sphere here um will be interesting to see what the other viewers got uh so that's what i got on this one thanks